Hey everyone, welcome to the analytical coding. In today's video, we are going to see two more functions in filter functions category of DAX functions. So before getting into the video, if you don't want to miss any video in our DAX series, please do subscribe to our channel. New content is uploaded weekly. So getting into our video today, the first function we are going to see is lookup value. So what is lookup value? This lookup value function returns the value from a column for a row that meets specified search conditions. So think of it like we look up in Excel. So coming to its syntax, so this lookup value will take the result column name as a first argument and then search column and its search value and we can give multiple conditions and along with that we can provide the alternate result. So let us see these arguments clearly. So the result column name. So the column from which we want to return a value. So it should be an existing column and not an expression. And coming to the search column. So the column where we are searching for a match. And coming to the search value, the value we are looking for. So we can provide multiple pairs of search column name and search value. And coming to the alternate result. So it is the value to return if the context of this result column name filtered to zero or more than one distinct value. So what this complete lookup value function returns. So this function returns a value from result column at the row where all pairs of search column and search value have an exact match. So let us see an example to clearly understand how it works. Before that, let me clear you about the relationships we are having. So I have removed the relationship between products and sales fact table and also sales and customers. So I have removed these relationships so that I can clearly see how a lookup value function works without a relation. So let us go to this table view. So now let us see how a lookup value function works inside a calculated column. So for that, I am in this sales table and creating the new column. And here I am going to create a lookup value function. That is, you can see here I have given the products category as the result column name and product ID is equal to that of sales of sales product ID. That means, so here, as we know, this category is the result column name. That means the column from which we want to return a value. And here, the search column is product ID in the products table. And what we have to search for? We have to search for the product ID. So the product ID in the sales table, if it has the exact match in the product ID, then we have to return the products category for that particular product ID. So it has returned this result. That means let us check. So here product ID 13 has networking and 12 has accessories. Let us go to the product table. And you can see 13 has the category networking and 12 has the accessories. So in this way, a lookup value will work. That means it returns the exact value when there is a match between the search column name and the value we have provided. So again, here we do not have any relationship between the sales table and product table. But still, this lookup value is returning the value of the category for the matching product IDs between the product table and sales table. So this is how a lookup value works inside the calculated column. Now let us see how this works inside a measure. So let us go to the report view and let us see the example. So here I have created a measure where you can see lookup value. Here I have given the customer name I want. So I want this customer name from this customers of customer ID where the value is selected value of the sales customer ID. This function should return a single scalar value. Otherwise, the measure do not accept this kind of functions. So here you can see this 
function will return a single scalar value because we have given the customer id to be the selected value of the sales customer id okay now when this matches it gives the customer name so this customer name will not be multiple values right so here in this customer id i have added customer id column from this sales table right now in this card i am going to add the measure which we have created you can see this function returns blank because i haven't selected any customer id right so the selected value of customer id doesn't return anything like it returns blank so that is why it is returning the blank again you can see cup value syntax we have the alternate result to display instead of the blank value so let us add some alternate value okay now let us see so now you can see instead of the blank being displayed the customer name is getting displayed because we have not selected anything in the customer id slicer hence the selected value does not return anything and hence we are getting the alternate result that is the customer name in the selected measure right and now when i select a particular customer id like c3 you can see the customer name for the selected value in this way the lookup value works even we do not have relationship between the customer table and sales table in our data model but still lookup value is giving us a correct customer name for the selected customer id that is from the sales table we can use lookup value if there is no relationship and we need to match on multiple columns that is multiple search conditions and if we want more control in the complex lookup conditions so in these situations or scenarios we can use the lookup value and now let us see this selected value function this selected value returns the value when there is only one value selected in the context otherwise it returns a fallback usually a blank or the custom value so in this index you can see the column name and alternate result so the column name is the column from which we want to get the selected value and the alternate result so the value to return if more than one value is selected or no value is selected so now what this function returns so a single value if only one is selected otherwise it returns the alternate results so let us see an example to understand this clearly so here i have created a measure for selected value where it will select the value for the products category so let us add this measure now you can see this returns a blank value because we have not selected any category and we have also not provided any alternate results so let me give the alternate result that is the category sales and now let us see what happens so whenever we do not select any category value from the slicer it displays the alternate result that is category sales and now what if i select something so in the category if i selected the entertainment you can see that it displays the entertainment so based on the selection it displays the selected value so that is what this selected value function is it takes a column name and whenever a slicer is applied on that column name and user selects that selected value is displayed by this selected value function now you may ask me that what is the use of this selected value common use cases are dynamic titles and labels that means maybe we wanted to show this selected product name in the visual title so in that case we can go with the selected value and dynamic measures based on the slicer selection we have seen while creating the lookup value right so based on the selection we are calculating some value like here we are calculating the customer name right in some cases we can use the calculate function like calculate total sales for this selected value of the customer id or category so in that case we can choose a particular customer id and the, that function will return the total sales for the selected one so in that cases like dynamic measures based on the slicer selection and the simple use case like in the debugging like 
just we have to show the selected value in a card to help users or ourselves understand what is selected so in that debugging purposes we can use that so this is all about the use cases of selected value so that's a wrap on lookup value and selected value so this marks the end of our dax filter function series and i hope you now feel more confident applying them in real projects and interviews if you enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next power bi concepts thanks for watching